2003, Amazon called and said, you guys are all over the internet. Their grand ambition at the time was to be like eBay. Now you're making moves right now. I'm one of the old guys. <laughs> the game has changed a lot. The, the market has matured. What is it gonna take to stay on top? What these incredibly creative entrepreneurs and inventors are doing, I think it's sort of the dawn of a new age here. Mr. Jason Boyce. Hi, Cameron. Thank you so much for being here. My pleasure. Thanks for having me. Absolutely. How's the show been so uh, far? So been far, good? so good. Yeah. So far, so good. What's what's the main uh, what's the main takeaway from the show so far? The show's getting bigger. Yeah. I I remember going to the very first show in Salt Lake City that James Thompson started, and I think every time I come to the show each year, I remember that first show and and look at how far this show has come and evolved. How big was it then? Um, you know, it was bigger than James thought it was going to be, <laughs> uh, which was great for him. Yeah. And um, it was it was the first of its kind. It was very exciting to get in rooms full of folks that yeah. were all managing this new thing, this Amazon sale, sales channel. And it was great to swap stories. And it was just like from the minute the first I, I stepped my foot in the first uh, panel and the first show, it was just sort of kumbaya. It was great. How, how big was it then? Like how you know, many people? I'm, I'm guessing there may have been 500 okay. to 700, which is sizable. That's pretty good, actually. Yeah, I, yeah. Remember, I, you know, I remember talking to James, you know, maybe two months before the show going, I don't know if anyone's going to show up. And they were really <laughs> happy with a huge turnout from it that like first show. Great turnout. Yeah. So okay, the conversation today, would love to dive into who you are and your background leading into today. I, sure. I, it's not like you're you're clouded in mystery or anything. I just <laughs> I just uh, I I find your your presence in the industry really interesting, and I am very curious to hear the backstory for how how you got here. Well, thanks, Cameron. Yeah, I yeah, appreciate of course. That. So where where does where does Amazon start for you? What just putting that so out there as a general. I, ironically, thought. I was just leaving the Marine Corps. Uh, my brother had this crazy idea to start a website called SuperDuperHoops.com. Hmm. And uh, he had become friends with some guys that were working at a company called Overture. Okay. And Overture invented pay-per-click advertising. They had a tiny office. It was the very beginning of this whole PPC thing. Uh, ultimately, Yahoo bought them. And then they sued Amazon, uh, not Amazon, excuse me, Google, because Google had stolen their technology and turned it into AdWords. And wow. so, so we, had, we knew these guys in the room and we were all over the search engines. Um, you know, there wasn't really, Google wasn't the power that it is now. And there was Alta Vista and all these other Vista companies. And, and so my brother started this business. I was just getting out of the Marines mm -hmm. and he said, look, I started this business. I need your help. And, and we started super duper hoops.com. Super duper hoops. That was 2002, wow. 2003, Amazon called and said, you guys are all over the internet. Thanks to our friends at Overture. We want you to sell your sporting goods on our website. And I was like, Dude, I just bought a VHS tape from you guys. What do you guys, what do you mean you're selling sporting <laughs> really? goods? It was, the marketplace was nothing. Yeah. And their grand ambition at the time was to be like eBay. So, so they were reaching out to key players to, to on bring. On the phone, on wow, a telephone. Wow, wow. Yeah. That's, that's wild. So did yeah. you do it? Do you accept? We did. Okay. We, you know, we, we didn't have a choice. I mean, we were just a small, tiny company. And, you know, in our first year, we did 100,000. The second year, we did a million. After that, we did 2 million. We do, were doubling every year. Yeah because they were getting the shoppers in. And all we did was throw up bad listings, <laughs> really bad listings compared to what's, you know, best practices now, they were a joke. Yeah. And it was just massive business. So what was what was then the end result? We're, we're getting like the, the snapshot version of the history, right? But how, what was the transition then from that into, what, what was after that? Like after sure. you, you, did you sell that business? And then what did you transition into afterwards? What did that look like? Yeah, sure. So. Built that business for 17 years, became mm -hmm. a top 200 seller somewhere in that 17 years, and uh, had an exit. Uh, wrote a book called The Amazon Jungle, yes. uh, telling about that story and uh, also, you know, what I think is the best way to move forward as a seller on Amazon, yep. um, which which very much involves building your own brand more so now than ever. And I, then I began consulting, mm -hmm. and I would talk to these brands, and I would say, "Look, I need you to do." 168 things before our next call next week yeah. and they're like i can't do this and <laughs> like, i said that's what it takes yeah that's right. what it takes that's what it takes and i said fine just give it to me 
we'll build a team, we'll be your outsourced Amazon department. Hmm. And so Avenue 7 Media sort of evolved from there. Uh, wanted to just be a consultant, and then we ended up just doing everything for, for brands and helping them Okay, grow. so Avenue 7 was created out of working with brands and just taking over the tasks that were necessary to exactly evolve right. and grow them exponentially. Yep, exactly right. Nothing, nothing, uh, th th nothing too complicated about it. It was just, I saw a need. Uh, my, uh, the brands that I was working with were running their business. Yep. And, you know, I couldn't fault them. They had other things to worry about, but they wanted to be on Amazon. And in order to do it, you've got to do 200 things. Yes. And so we took it off their hands. So I'm, I'm curious, this kind of leads into today. Again, we're kind of jumping around in big movements of time. Of course, sure. there's so much that's happening in between. I think we just covered 20 years. Okay, Cameron. 20 years in a couple <laughs> minutes. That's good. That's good. We'll have to do a deeper dive again sometime. <laughs> But it gives a good snapshot of the, of the progression from seller into Avenue 7. And kind of now, you're making moves right now. We you, made you're, a few moves. You're making, making some moves. Yeah. Which, I, I just to check real quick, are you okay talking about Absolutely, yeah. Okay. The press okay. releases are out. Okay, so. good. I just, wanted, I just wanted to make sure. Yeah. So you, you're, the transition from, you went from seller to Avenue 7 into kind of today where moves are being made. What is the evolution now? Like what is, sure. what is the play for you? now after Avenue 7, or in sure. addition to Avenue sure. 7? Sure, well, uh, you know, our goal is to be the absolute best Amazon full service provider in the industry. And um, we have an organic strategy, which is our organic growth and an inorganic strategy. And what we've done is we've acquired three agencies um, of varying sizes. The most recent was uh, Rachel Greer's agency, Cascadia yes. Solutions. And each one of them has been complementary to the services that we already offer. For example, in Rachel's case, she does a lot of things that we weren't doing and she's been a pioneer. Mm. She's been ex Amazon. She's got a ton of Amazonians on her team. And so they just provide this amazing depth of knowledge and understanding. You know, my background is a seller and I, I see yeah. myself as an advocate for sellers, sometimes poking Amazon in the eye when they're not taking care of sellers. And so Rachel comes from that background as well, mm. both on the consumer safety side and also um, uh, advocates for sellers, but she has that very interesting Amazonian background that I, I never really had. Yeah. It feels like I have sometimes because I've been on the platform for 20 years, but yeah, I, I yeah, didn't. Yeah. And so, you know, when I look at the three acquisitions we made, which was Marketplace Seller Courses, um, Volatent Consulting, and now Cascadia Solutions, they're all very complementary. They all what, bring unique pieces to the puzzle for us. What What were those each? You just talked about one. Yeah. Um, what, what were the other pieces? What, what, sure. what did those other pieces provide? And why did you choose to make, to bring those people in? Sure. Well, you know, Shannon Roddy was the first acquisition. Yep. Um, just a great connector in the space, a big advocate for sellers. So that's where we started our conversation. I know he he fights for sellers really hard. He does. Um, and he built these great courses. And we want to be able to fine tune those courses, market those courses and offer for folks who maybe aren't yet ready to go to a full service agency. They're just getting started. Yeah. And we wanted to use those those capabilities and those training courses to help our internal training to help grow our inter in house. And so nice. Shannon has been a wonderful addition. He's just amazingly talented individual. He's a great guy. Uh, he's a great guy. Very you know, knowledgeable. You know, yeah, yeah, you know he, Shannon, he is. He's a great connector. He's a yeah. great, and a great supporter. In fact, I of the think community. I first met him in your guys' office. Oh, really? At okay. the Seller Velocity no way. Conference. Yeah, yeah, sure, yeah. sure. Okay, that's funny. That's right. That conference really provided some glue. It did. To, to it bring really did. <laughs> and, and then we met uh, Justin Coates, a founder of a terrific agency out of Bend, Oregon. Yeah. Bend is a hot spot for really cool, brand new direct to consumer brands. Hmm. And Justin is just a hustler. Like he went door to door to some of these DTC brands in the Bend area and brought on some really great, wow. uh, you know, direct to consumer brands. And, we, and we're, we, we only work with brands. We don't yeah. work with resellers. Yeah. And, um, you know, we kind of hit it off again in your guys' office. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Hey, man. Continue the, the conversation. Is, that's it. That's, it. <laughs> that's great. And, um, and, you know, it just, it made sense. They're very like-minded. We loved their energy that they brought. Yeah. Uh, their capabilities. Um, and so it was just sort of a no brainer for us. So thinking strategically about yeah. selling today, obviously you've, you've been in the game for a long time. You, I'm one you of the old guys. You, what's that? <laughs> I'm one of the old guys. You, I mean, <laughs> that's not what I was going for. You're, it's true. You, it's okay. You're knowledgeable. You're knowledgeable. Yeah. Um, what, what will it take? What will it take? So maybe even not, what does it take today, but what will it take to succeed in the coming years? The game has changed a lot. The, yeah. the market has matured. Uh, we're seeing that here, at, even at Prosper. Yeah. Things have changed. 2021, things changed a lot. What is it going to take to stay on top? You know, it's a great question. I think it starts with a mindset. And 
I was doing a pre-call for a panel at four o'clock I'm doing today for trends and predictions and James Kelly's on the panel and yes. Bernie Thompson, very accomplished sellers, yeah. uh, ex Amazon yeah. uh, in James's case. And we were talking about this and I was reminding them that when I first met them so many years ago, they were Amazon first, Amazon only. They didn't want to talk about anything else. They didn't want to talk about other sales channels, but that's, that is completely a 180 turn. And so James sees himself as a brand first now, not necessarily an Amazon seller. Bernie, who mastered Amazon early on, sees himself as a brand. Hmm. And he's taking that brand that he's built, those lessons he learned, the hard, hard lessons he learned as an Amazon seller. And now that's translating to brick and mortar retail stores, yeah, to yeah. Walmart, to their own Shopify hmm. store. And so I think that's the biggest, you know, we talked about the first the first conference uh, yeah, yeah. In, yes. in, in Salt Lake City. Yes. Those are Amazon only folks. Yeah. Resellers, heavy resellers. It is a branders game now. Mm. You, you need to develop your brands. I think we are in the age of the micro brand. Mm. I think what, they're, what these incredibly creative entrepreneurs and inventors are doing is great for society. I think yeah. it's great for consumers. And I think it's sort of the dawn of a new age here mm. that the next billion dollar brands will have probably started on Amazon They've fine-tuned and perfected themselves, and then they got in front of every other customer, whether that's yes. Shopify or Walmart or any of the other marketplaces that are out there. Do you, do you see uh, the aggregation of these brands? I, I know that some people don't like the term aggregator, but yeah. it just conveys the, the concept of it. Sure. Do you think that will uh, change the concept of the micro brand at all? Do you think, it'll, do you think that, that will kind of uh, retain Will, will the, the spirit of the micro band, brand be retained over, as, over the years as they're acquired? How do you think that'll change? You know, it's, it's a great question. We probably need 45 minutes to talk about, unpack, okay, okay. Um, yeah, unpack this one. I'll that's try fair. to summarize, right? Um, I, I'm fascinated by this space, the Amazon aggregator space. I mean, look, you got companies like Unilever and Procter & Gamble that are essentially a conglomeration of hundreds so and true. hundreds of brands. And um, so I think, I think the concept is sound, right? But I think especially some of the lower tier aggregators are finding the hard way what Amazon sellers have known for 20 years. This is not easy, yeah. you know? My, my, my friend James Thompson says that, you know, a Amazon seller central accounts uh, akin to an ER, and you, an ER room, and you never know great what's analogy. coming through that door. That's a great analogy. So imagine inheriting and buying 200 brands oh, where you're managing all those. It's a really tough nut to crack. I think there's some really good aggregators out there that are going to survive and thrive and go public and make a name for themselves. Yeah. But I also think there's going to be an equal number, maybe a greater number that don't succeed. Wow. That's, that's really insightful. Yeah. That's, I'm, well, we're going to see. Yeah. We're, we're, we're going to see. Yeah. Kind of final question. Um, what's next for you next couple of years? Yeah. What's next for Jason Boyce? And what last pieces of advice would you give? to sellers, to brands that are listening right now? Oh, great question. So what's next for me is we're gonna to continue to grow Avenue 7 Media, uh, continue to add our scope and scale um, so that we can reach our goal of being that best uh, Amazon managed services agency in the space. Yeah. Uh, we, don't, we don't care if we're the biggest, we wanna be the best. best. And uh, that's our stated goal and it starts and ends with the brands that we work with and the sellers that we work with. Um, and I'm sorry, the second question. The second question was, what's your last piece of advice for ah. sellers and brands? Look, I think James Kelly has his thumb on the pulse of what's happening here. Mm. And um, I, I think that we are in the age of the micro brand. So anything that you can do to differentiate your brand, to make your brand cooler, better, and different, to build community, yeah. and to be able to get your brand wherever shoppers are. Now, we know half of the shoppers are on Amazon, so you have to be there. We know that some don't want to shop on Amazon. They want to shop yeah. on Walmart. You should be there and you should be in your own direct to consumer and you should build that community mm. starting from the ground up. Listen to what the customers say. Make the changes. You start to see a theme where a customer is complaining about the same thing. Make that change, fix that change, perfect your brand, and maybe you can be the next billion dollar mm. brand. Build a brand, listen to your consumers. That's it. Keep on growing. That's it. It's the best advice. Jason, thank you for, for taking time to be here. Really insightful. We'll have to have another, that other 45 minute conversation. About, I love it. Uh, Anytime, Cameron. Okay, we will, we will. <laughs> Jason, thanks again. Thank you.